the next thing I'm going to do, which is the most significant next piece of the puzzle, is going to be my tape machine emulation. I want to pick a tape formula, operating level, speed, and then probably do just maybe a little bit of adjustment to the EQ curves and bias setting. First thing I'm doing is just going to kind of scroll through the different tape formula options here. Pick the preferred one. And, and just kind of go from there. So we were on 456. feels the best to me. I just keep getting distracted by the way that this tambourine overdub is so loud. So I'm just gonna go and find that thing and turn it down. Let me just explain. 250 is too lo-fi sounding to me. 456 was what it comes up on. It sounds nice. It sounds a little too vintage to me. The low end, it's warm. It's a little bit back. The upper mid-range is pretty present. I want this to have a little bit extended bottom and open top. The 900 is giving me a little bit more of that. The depth on the GP9 wasn't really doing it for me. The 900 sounded the best. 456 is a the terminology is like elevation, the record level, how much magnetic energy is stored on the tape. It's like a reference level, how much magnetic energy is stored on the tape versus what you see as zero on the VU meter. 456 was a lower operating level tape. Plus three and plus six are more correct for that tape formula. 900 came after that. 456 was around in the 70s and 900, maybe late 80s, 90s. Then the elevation, the amount of energy you could store on the tape was higher. Part of that was to get away from the noise floor and just also tape saturation at the higher levels. Because I chose 900, I know it's a hotter tape formula. I took the um, operating level up to seven and a half. Nine felt like it was too much saturation and it's starting to get soft. Let's listen to the difference between plus six and plus seven and a half. Plus seven and a half, it's feeling a little punchier. It's getting up towards the headroom of the tape, the saturation, that feels good. I experimented with the two EQ curves. I like 15 inches per second. I just like the head bump, the resolution of the tape and just the low frequency bump that I'm getting with NAB. When you switch it to 30 inches per second, the faster the tape moves past the head, that's what this refers to, the higher the resolution is. You're storing the information on twice as much tape. It's just a higher resolution copy of it. It doesn't have as much character to me. When you go to 30 inches per second, you only have one EQ curve available, which is what everybody agreed on, which is the AES curve. For that faster tape speed was around when we had 15 as the highest tape speed. You had the American standard NAB, which was more about low frequency emphasis. And then there's the CCIR, which is the European standard, which is more about high frequency emphasis. So I just kind of shot those out. There's a lot of aggressive cymbals and guitars and Rich's timbre of his voice is high. CCIR is not really um, as flattering. I like the NAB. So those are the things I was listening to. Also, there's the tape width is similar to the tape speed in terms of resolution. It's, I like half inch. It has a little bit more color. It has a good resolution 
But if you put it on one inch, there's a not as much change. I'll just show you what I mean. We'll go through those. You can hear how the transients become clearer and brighter. I'm not getting as much of the benefit of the tape emulation of where it's soaking up some of the transients and doing a little bit of sort of transient control compression. A quarter inch is gonna to be too low of a resolution. We're gonna hear the bottom end start to go away a little bit. It'll just sound a little bit more mid-rangey. Fifteen inches per second, half inch. That's sort of what I prefer. It's sort of in between. So I'm going to quickly, because I've made a few changes that I want to keep and I want to start playing with the CQ. I want to be able to compare it to the preset that I'm going to save. And this is keep the light on. Call this point one. Okay. So now I've got all those choices we talked about saved from factory. And now I'm going to start playing with some of the high frequency EQ response on the playback and the bias. I'll probably under bias it a little bit, turning it counterclockwise. Bias is the current that's applied to the tape in the record path. It's a high frequency, way above what we hear. It's usually about 100K, 100 cycles. Its job is to excite the tape particles to be magnetized with the information that we're wanting to record on the tape. The higher the current, the more excited the particles become and the more readily they are to accept the content that you're putting on there. The higher the level, the better the high frequency response. So it'll appear brighter. If you under bias it from a little bit, obviously because you're not getting as much high frequency detail, it just sounds a little darker and a little thicker. I tend to like to under bias it a little bit, but let's see. Right now, the way these EQ curves are, you'll see if I change from formula to formula, the EQ curves are changing and the bias will change when I go to 250. That's because the electronics are optimized for the tape formula. That's what this AutoCal is. If I turn this off and I change the tape formula, then the EQ just stays how it was, but we're gonna leave it on AutoCal. Go back to 900. So now I'm just gonna play with my bias a little bit. That's what I tend to like, just under biasing it just a little bit. It just makes it feel a little thicker and it helps me with the depth. I will turn it up so you can hear what I was talking about with it getting a little bit brighter. It doesn't necessarily get brighter and just at the very top end trebly. You can hear the mid-range becomes a little bit more forward and it gets a little cloudy, but also a little bit of the bottom end is starting to go away, starting to feel a little softer. So I'm gonna under bias it a little bit. I'm gonna just leave it there for now. I'll probably visit this another time or two and adjust it. When I'm far from home.